Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. A few people have requested that I demonstrate my Lightroom to Photoshop and back to Lightroom workflow. In this video, I'm going to do just that. All right, I have this raw file and I've already done quite a bit of Lightroom processing to it. As you can see, I did basic panel adjustments, tone curve, detail, I did HSL. So I did a lot to this image already. But along the top, you can see there's some branches that are hanging into the image and I wanna get rid of those. And it's much more effective and efficient to do that in Photoshop. Now this is a raw file, unfortunately, Photoshop won't work on this raw file directly. When we send it over there, Lightroom's going to create another file that will go over to Photoshop and then we'll be working on that file. Now, you have the choice of what type of file is sent over. You could send over either a PSD or a TIFF and there's advantages and disadvantages of both. First of all, to make that choice, you should go to Lightroom Preferences. If you have a Mac, it's under the Lightroom Classic menu. If you have a PC, Preferences is under the Edit menu. So we're going to go to Preferences and we're going to go to the fourth uh, or no, the third tab from the left, External Editing. And right at the top, you could see File Format. This is to edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020. I have it set to PSD. You also could either set it to TIFF if you prefer. Now the advantage of PSD is generally speaking, it's going to be a much smaller file than a TIFF file. The disadvantage of PSD are, well, two. Uh, first of all, when Photoshop creates the PSD, it, it's slow. It takes a long time to save the PSD and it will save the TIFF file a bit faster. The other disadvantage of the PSD is if you often use other non-Adobe applications, they may not be able to read the PSD. In those cases, you may prefer to use a TIFF file. Now the TIFF file, there, the TIFF file, uh, as I mentioned, is larger and sometimes considerably larger if you're doing a lot of layers in Photoshop. So it's going to be larger, take up more disk space, but the TIFF file should be able to be read in just about every application there is. So as you noticed, I had it set to PSD. Um, and it really doesn't matter to me. Uh, personally, I don't think I use too many applications outside of Adobe applications, so I don't really have to worry about that too much. But I have it set to PSD, and then if you read the uh, what's written in here, it's mentioning that um, that when saving from Photoshop, please be sure to use the maximum compatibility option in Photoshop. Failure to do so will result in images cannot be read in Lightroom. So that is another issue. And once we get into Photoshop, I'll show you to make sure that you're saving to maximum compatibility. So that isn't an issue for you. So I have it to PSD. Photo RGB is what it recommends here for both the PSD and the TIFF. It mentions Photo RGB and 16 bits per component. And resolution, I have it set to 360. Uh, most people recommend that you have it between 240 and 300. Epson Printers recommends that you set it to 360 if you're printing to their printers, which I do. So I have it set to 360. So that is that. Now, when I have an image and I want to send it over to Photoshop, as I mentioned, I want to get rid of these branches. All I need to do is right click right on the image and go down to edit in and go to Adobe Photoshop 2020 right at the top. Now, as I mentioned, Lightroom's going to be creating a PSD in this case. And when it creates the PSD, it then will open that PSD up in Photoshop. As you can see, it's reading the camera raw format. Now, unfortunately, when it creates the PSD or TIFF, either one, it's baked in all those adjustments I just did in Lightroom. So I can't go in and readjust anything. Now there is kind of a slight workaround, which I'll show you in a minute, but uh, for most instances when you're sending an image over into Photoshop from Lightroom, any adjustments you did in Lightroom are going to be baked in to that file, PSD or TIFF. Now I mentioned I want to get rid of these branches and I think I'm going to use um, Content Aware Fill. So I'm going to get the lasso tool and I'm simply going to um, 
uh, mark around or draw around each of the branches. And I'm going to hold the shift key so that I'm adding to my selection. And I found that if you do smaller selections as I'm doing now, as opposed to just doing this whole thing and that whole thing, that the uh, edit or the replacement will look better. So that's why I'm taking the time to do these branches individually instead of a big you know, swoop of the left and a big swoop of the right. So I have them all selected. Now I want to do content aware fill. Uh, one way I, there's a, two different ways you could do that. You could go up to the menu system. Um, I believe it's under the end edit menu, content aware fill there. But the way I prefer to do it, if I'm in a real hurry, is hold the shift key in and hit the delete key and you'll get this dialog box, content aware fill. It's right there in that drop down. Click OK and it will hopefully eliminate all those branches and it did so I'm going to get rid of the marching ants by hitting command D it's control D if you have a PC um, so that gets rid of them now it mentioned uh, remember maximum compatibility when you're saving the file for that you have to go to Photoshop's preferences if you have a Mac that's under the Photoshop menu if you have a PC it's under the edit menu so you're gonna go down to preferences and then you're gonna go down to file handling and then this dialog box pops up. And towards the bottom of this middle part, you'll see Maximize PSD and PSB File Compatibility. Make sure that is set to Always. You could have it as Never or Ask. So I have it set to Always. So I'm maximizing the compatibility when I save this. Now for saving it, you could just go up to the File menu and save. The way I just do it is I just quit Photoshop and then it will ask me do you want to save this and I'll say yes I'll save it and you'll see that it will bring us back into Lightroom and it's now another image so it's a second image that's a PSD file and as you can see everything is reset over here it says it's a brand new image now I mentioned that there kind of is a workaround slightly uh, for if you want to come in and re-edit things. And let me show you that. We're going to go back to the original raw file. All right, we're back to the net file and we have those branches up there. And this time I'm going to right click it on it and I'm going to go to edit in, but I'm going to go towards the bottom and I'm going to go to open as smart object in Photoshop. When you open a raw file as a smart object in Photoshop, it will still create that PSD or TIFF file, but it will allow you to do some re-editing. So it's going to preserve all my Lightroom edits. But unfortunately, not all of Photoshop's functionality will be available to you. And unfortunately, that Content Aware Fill won't be available. So I won't be able to do that, but I'm gonna show you that anyway. So now it's opened in Photoshop and if you look over at the layers panel, you could see that on the little uh, postage stamp, there's a little square in the corner that's indicating that this is a smart object. Now, if I do select, I'll just select all this over here, all right, and I want to do content aware fill there. If I hit shift delete, it will tell me could not complete your request because the smart object is not directly editable. So I can't do that. So there's some things you can't do. What you can do is you could put a adjustment layer on there. And let's just say I want to do a cooling filter, cool it off, all right? I don't like that, but let's just say I want to do that. Well, then I'll say, well, I added the cooling filter, but now it kind of put my white and black point off a little bit. So I want to re-edit my Lightroom edits. Well, because it's a smart object, I'll be able to do that. All you need to do is double click directly on this layer right where that little like uh, postage stamp is. So double click there. Then what it will do, it will open it in Camera Raw. Adobe Camera Raw uses the exact same processing engine as Lightroom. And you can see all my Lightroom edits are here. There's the tone curve, uh, the HS, or sharpening, I'm sorry, the HSL panel, everything is there. So I could come in here now and do an edit or re-edit of my Lightroom edits. Now, um, for this demonstration, I'm just going to do something really 
obvious. So I'm just going to turn exposure way up so you could see it. I'll click OK. Now what it will do, it's preparing the smart object. But you'll notice now is it will be very bright. And this photo filter is still effective. It's still working the image. You can see the coolness that photo filter did. Now, Unfortunately, though, when I bring it back into Lightroom, I won't be able to re-edit any Lightroom edits. Let me show you that. I'm going to go to Photoshop, Quit Photoshop, and I'll click Save. And once, now I mentioned it's a PST file, and they do take a little longer to save. So you'll see in the lower left-hand corner of the progress bar that it's kind of inching along. So it's always, uh, especially when you have more layers, the more layers you have, the longer it will take to save. TIFF files save a little faster, but again, they take up a lot more disk space. So there's always trade-offs in photography, it seems. All right, so now we're in here. We have a third image now. Here's our PSD file. It does have the edits. Now you'll notice everything's reset, so we're kind of back to ground zero. But if I right-click on this and I go down to, um, I'm sorry, Edit In, and we go to Edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020. Now it has the choice. Edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Edit a straight copy or edit the original. Let's edit the original. And we'll go there. So now it's going to open up in Photoshop. But the cool thing is, what I'm getting at here, is that smart object, that initial layer, that's preserved. So even though it, we can't re-edit it in Lightroom, we could go back into Photoshop and double click on this and it will open up that layer, that smart object in Adobe Camera Raw and I could come in and reset uh, the image the way I want and click OK. And now it's going to again prepare the smart object and then eventually it's back to normal there so i can now save it photoshop quit photoshop save so i hope that made sense when you send a smart an image from lightroom into photoshop as a smart object you could do your re-edit your lightroom edits on that smart object layer unfortunately there's a lot of other stuff uh, you won't be able to do. For instance, you won't be able to do that content aware fill. That's the whole purpose of the image uh, or, you know, processing the image, uh, why I sent it over to Photoshop to begin with. So uh, experiment. Um, I'd say if possible, always send an image as a smart object into Photoshop and hopefully whatever you need to do will be available to you on that smart object. Then you could always go back in and re-edit it. It just makes it that much more non-destructive. Unfortunately, there's just some things, for example, removing these branches that you just cannot do on a smart object. So that's it. That's kind of my quick workflow of how I go about sending an image into Photoshop, choosing the PSD or TIFF file, what works best for you, use whatever works best. Um, you know, to me, it doesn't really matter. I actually had it set to TIFF, but I set it to PST for this demonstration before I did the video, just so you could see how long a PSD file takes to save, so you understand that it will take a little longer. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.